Welcome everybody. Today's hearing officer meeting is called to order. Today is November 7th, 2017. My name is David Williams. I'm the hearing officer for the city of Tempe. Everybody hear me okay? Great. The city of Tempe hearing officer is authorized by Arizona revised statutes and the city of Tempe zoning and development code. And he has the duty to carry out the provisions and intent of the city of Tempe general plan and zoning and development code. The hearing officer is granted authority to conduct public hearings to review and either approve, continue, deny, or approve with conditions several types of cases, including variances, use permits, and property abatements. On today's agenda, we have nine agenda items which will actually be heard today, including a set of meeting minutes, five abatement cases, uh, two use permit requests, and one use permit revocation will be considered today. Uh, there are a couple modifications to the agenda, and I'd like to review those now in case you're here for one of those items and they won't be heard. We'll save you some time. This includes agenda item number two, the Womack property abatement, and agenda item number four, the Rusin property abatement, have been withdrawn. Those properties have been brought into compliance, and those cases will not be heard today. Regarding agenda item number five, Prather's property abatement, and agenda item number six, the Miller property abatement. Both of those cases have been continued to the December 19th hearing officer meeting. If you're here for those, those will be heard on December 19th, 2017. I have one other item, um, a, a modification to the order of our agenda. After we hear uh, agenda item number 10 uh, regarding use permit, for Tempe Full Gospel Church. After that case, we'll go to agenda item number 12, which is a request for PPG architectural coding for use permit there. So we'll hear agenda item number 11 last today. Okay, a couple more items. As the hearing officer, I get to review carefully the City of Tempe Community Development Department report on each of the items that will be discussed today and considered at this meeting, and I use the information in that report during our deliberations and discussions. Additionally, I've driven by each of the properties that are on the agenda today so I can have an understanding of the conditions on the property and the immediate neighborhoods surrounding it that may uh, be part of the consideration for the agenda item. Uh, if you're an applicant or interested citizen, when your request is called or when you wish to address the hearing officer, you're welcome to please do so. Please step up to the microphone at the front of the room and state your name and city of residence. Any person other than an applicant that wishes to speak should complete a white speaker card, and those are on the, in the back of the room on the table, and turn that in when you come up to speak, if you would. We appreciate that very much. Uh, each person is given about three minutes to speak, just to give you a guideline, and you're all welcome to speak if you'd like to. Any person who might be aggrieved by decision of the hearing officer has the right to file an appeal, and that has to happen within 14 calendar days of the decision. So as such, the deadline for appeals for any decisions made today is 3 p.m. November 20th, 2017. That's 3 p.m. November 20th, 2017. Appeals of decisions of the hearing officer are either heard by the Board of Adjustment or the Development Review Commission, whichever of those bodies is appropriate to the type of case that's being appealed. Uh, finally, in the case of a property abatement, if the property owner fails to file an appeal or fails to bring the pro and fails to bring the property into compliance prior to this appeal date, the code violations discussed today and addressed at the hearing today will be abated by the City of Tempe. Uh, before we get started, we've got a couple introductions of our City of Tempe staff over here to my right, including Steve Abrahamson, Principal Planner, Sydney Bethel, Administrative Assistant, and Lee Jimenez, uh, Senior Planner. Karen Stobel is also here today. And we're going to go ahead and get started on our agenda item, which first one is agenda item one, consideration of the meeting minutes from October 17. I did review those minutes. There is a correction I want to get in the record before we consider approving them. And that's on page six, uh, under speaker named Darlene Justice. Uh, please strike the portion of the first sentence that includes chairperson of the North Tempe Neighborhood Association. Let's have that sentence simply read, Tempe resident Darlene Justice spoke in support of these requests. With that change to the uh, meeting, meeting minutes for October 17th, uh, they are hereby approved. 
We are moving on to uh, agenda item three. As we mentioned, uh, item two will not be heard today. And that is a request approval to abate public nuisance items at the Stefaniak property. This is case CE 177030, located at 1849 East Harvard Drive. The applicant is the city of Tempe. Uh, welcome, Mr. Schofield. Good to see you. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Jack Schofield, code inspector with the city of Tempe, here today requesting a 180 day abatement for the property at 1849 East Harvard Drive to address deteriorated landscape in the front and rear yard. Uh, notifications were mailed out to the property owner with no avail. Um, I did go by there today. Some of the front yard was taken care of. However, the rear yard is been untouched. Therefore, still requesting the 180 day abatement for the property. Thank you very much. Uh, I did go by and observe that looked like some work was done, but I understood there's additional work. This has a familiar ring to it, this case. Did we have this case not that long ago, or did we continue uh, it? Yes, sir. There is a quite a long history with the property. It's usually every eight to ten months. I'm back up here asking for the abatement. Okay. And you're requesting an open 180 days. Yes, um, is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on agenda item number three today? The Stefaniak property. Not seeing anyone in the audience, the city's request for an open 180-day abatement is hereby approved. And thank you very much, Mr. Schofield. We're going to go ahead to agenda item four. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to go to agenda item seven because four, five, and six will not be heard today. Thank you for reminding me, staff. Uh, so item number seven is a request approval to abate public nuisance items at the Thomas property, CE 176-835, located at... 123 West Fairmont Drive. The applicant's the city of Tempe. Uh, Ms. Schofield, welcome. Good afternoon, Julie Schofield, Code Compliance. Um, I was actually going to ask that you dismiss this case tonight. I went by the property today and found it to be in compliance. Okay. Um, any other details? This was this one is landscape front yard, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, certainly have no problem with that. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Great. All right. So agenda item number seven is found to be in compliance. Correct. Okay. All right. Let's go into agenda item number eight. And uh, this is a request to approve public nuisance items at Whitaker property, CE 174496, located at 3822 South Dorsey, applicant city of Tempe. Ms. Schofield. Hello again. Um, asking for the abatement of a large dead tree in the front yard of this property at 3822 South Dorsey Lane. This case has been open since May of this year. Um, after several extensions, the tree is still standing. So I'm asking that we um, go ahead and, and get the abatement approved so that we could have it taken care of. Okay. Do you have a picture right there with I you? I do. Can you show us a picture of this tree? It's not in color, but... Oh, here. Use mine. <laughs> Small tree. It's tree. really big. And uh, okay, thank you for indulging me. Uh, I was by there obviously today and impressed by the, the size of this tree and its um, starkness on the on the block in that neighborhood. Uh, any recent communication with this property owner? The Scofield? last time I had communication was with a man who said he was the owner's son. His name was Mark Whitaker, and um, he asked for an extension of time and also pamphlets on maybe some landscaping programs that we have, and those were provided to him as well. That was back in August. August. August 15th, okay. to be exact. Okay. Thank you very much. So August, we're now in November, a week short of the 15th, so three months, no activity. Um, is there anyone in the audience today who'd like to speak on agenda item number eight? Uh, request for 
abatement of public nuisance items for the Whitaker property. Not seeing anyone, your request for um, approve abatement for the tree is approved. Thank, Thank you very much. And just to go back as well, um, is there anybody in the audience on agenda item seven? I did not call the audience on that case. I apologize. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. We're moving on to agenda item nine. Uh, this is our last abatement case today. Request to approve abate. A request to approve abatement at public nuisance for public nuisance items at EC three holdings. Property CE 175706. Uh, this one's uh, located at 726 East Vista del Cerro Drive. Uh, Ms. Schofield. We are asking for an abatement to have a vehicle towed that is not only um, unregistered, but it also is parked in an area that's not an improved area for parking. Right. It's on the east side of the property. That's and the, the driveway truck. is actually on the west side, um, and it's on the side of the house. It is unregistered. Um, I sent several notices to the owner and the tenant as well. The tenant has been in contact, and um, you know she assured me it would be taken care of by today, but I went by there, and the vehicle is still parked there. Okay. Um, so I did go by there today. There were three cars parked on my, off the driveway and not on the street. So the one on the east is the pickup truck. Correct. It's kind of tucked back in there. The correct. Looks to even be partially parked on the neighbor's property, as that far as correct. I could estimate. Okay. Very good. Any anything else? And any response from these guys or gals? No. no like I said, uh, I had uh, from heard from the tenant assuring me that it would have been taken care of and. Uh, I went by oh, today. This is and kind it of a block of rentals, been. isn't it? Pretty yes, much it is all a, these homes. a rental property. Yes. We were skateboarding up and down the street. Okay, anyone here in the audience today who'd like to speak on agenda item number nine, an abatement case for uh, 726 East Vista del Cerro Drive? I'm not seeing anyone here to speak on this case. Uh, the city's request for. Uh, abatement for the vehicles parked in the um, non-vehicle areas is approved. Thank, Thank you, you for sir. your work today, Ms. Schofield. Okay, let's go talk about our first um, use permit case today. This is agenda item number 10, request approval for a use permit to allow tandem parking for Tempe Full Gospel Church. Case PL170307, located at 704 South Farmer Avenue, and the applicant is Nicholas Santakis. Hope I got that right. Design. Uh, Ms. Stovall. Yes. Um, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> so, yes, this is requested for the uh, property at 704 South Farmer. The site is zoned R3. Um, it is located at the southwest corner of Farmer and 7th Street. There are two existing buildings on the site. Um, the one on the north is a church, and the one on the south is used as an activity building. The applicant intends to build a 500-square-foot addition onto the west side of the church, which triggers an increase in the required number of vehicle parking spaces. Uh, to accommodate that additional requirement, the applicant is proposing six vehicle spaces in a tandem configuration on the south side of the activity building. Uh, the site plan shows four spaces directly adjacent to the south property line, all in a row, and then two spaces in a row just north of those. So on the site plan, those spaces are located here is the four, and then here's the other two. So um, access would be provided off of uh, Farmer. A neighborhood meeting was not required for this request, and staff has not received any public input. Uh, based on the information provided by the applicant and review of the use permit findings, we are recommending approval subject to the five, I believe it is, uh, stipulations listed in the staff report. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. I don't have any at this point. It seems fairly straightforward. Um, it is a little tight there, but um, yeah, I, I see that you've got it addressed fairly well. Is the applicant here today 
or their representative. Come on up or down. Hello, Nicholas Santagas. You said it pretty well. Thank you. So thank you very much. Welcome. Yeah. Just requesting approval for those six tandem parking spots there on the south of the property. And um, I don't think it should cause too much of a nuisance. Um, there have been people who do park there um, from time to time, and no neighbors have complained. I parked there today. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, there is a six-foot masonry wall there, too, so it's not going to be unsightly or anything like that. To the south. To the south. Property yes. line. Yes. Right. Um, what? How many days a week? Uh, obviously, a church we're operating on Sunday. Um, are there other days of the week that there's activities there? I know it's Sunday from 10 to 11 is uh, regular service, mm -hmm. and then once every every last Sunday of the month at 6 p.m. is open for about an hour or so. Okay, so Sunday is the day of Sunday activities. The, yes. Got it. Um, I do not have any additional questions or concern. I notice. Uh, staff, it's a non-durable surface or a gravel surface maybe that is durable and we're fine with the surface treatments that are out there. Yes, uh, the code requires um, if, the, if the developer is not going to use asphalt or pavers or concrete that they have to have a minimum um, three inch depth of um, decomposed granite so they will be providing that on the property. Okay. And uh, one of those spaces is actually a concrete pad where a building used to be. So. Right, I saw that. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, there are five conditions of approval. Are you aware of those? Any questions regarding those? No. Seems pretty straightforward. Makes, it makes sense. Okay. Thank you for being here today. Yeah. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on agenda item number 10? Uh, the use permit request for Tempe Full Gospel Church. You're welcome to do so. I'm the pastor of the church. The okay. church has been in uh, existence since uh, 1944. And we've used that area that we're talking about, extra parking, over and over again without any instance where we had any problem with anybody. And uh, we failed to realize why it's come up now when we've been using all these years. And so we're asking for your sanction that we can use it, not legally, because we're already legally using it, but to use it uh, to satisfy the request of the city of Tempe. So we're asking you to uh, grant it, that we can use it, and uh, I assure you there'll be no problem with any parking in that area. So I thank you for this opportunity to speak. Very good. I don't see any problems. And uh, thank you for being here today and taking the time to speak. I appreciate it. OK, anyone else? All right. Uh, it's a use permit case, so we do have a few criteria to review for the public record. Um, and they include a significant increase in vehicular pedestrian traffic. Uh, in this case, we're adding six parking spaces. Um, to comply with current code, and actually only five of them are really in addition to the number of spaces that currently exist. Uh, the location uh, has good access onto Farmer Avenue, and the limited use here, we just discussed how often this was used. Uh, I don't see any issue with the use of these spaces from safety or otherwise um, regarding vehicular or pedestrian traffic. There is a sidewalk that crosses that driveway, so we do need to be careful there. Nuisances arising from emission of odor, dust, gas, noise, vibration. Um, these parking spaces are either concrete or gravel. We, I just discussed that with staff a minute or two ago, which are surfaces that are durable and relatively dust-free. So no expected impact from, uh, from that is to occur. Uh, item number three, contribution to the deterioration of the neighborhood or downgrading of property values. I view this addition as quite the opposite and a plus for the neighborhood, an investment in the property, and I do wish the applicant uh, well with the construction. I hope that goes smoothly. Um, but in terms of the criteria, uh, I find number three to be met. 
compatibility with existing surrounding structures and uses. This is a relatively small addition uh, to the existing building mass that's on the site and nearby. It's a fairly uh, dense area with um, multi-family uses, single-family uses, and the church. Uh, there's a masonry wall that exists along the south property that we discussed a minute ago with the applicant that does provide screening uh, for the vehicle parking area from the multifamily folks. Uh, so this is, this is adequately met in my opinion. And finally, adequate control of disruptive behavior both inside and outside of the premises, uh, which could create a nuisance. Uh, we're not, of any, not aware of any disruption that occurs from parking or tandem parking. So uh, we don't expect any problem in that regard related to the addition of, of these spaces or the approval of the use permit. Um, as such, your request for use permit is approved subject to the five conditions in the staff report. Uh, again, thank you for being here and good luck with the construction project. Okay, as promised, we're going to skip agenda item 11 for now. We'll be coming back to it and we're going to jump over to agenda item 12 and talk about a request approval of a use permit to allow retail use. This is a paint store, PPG architectural coating, uh, PL170319, uh, located at 725 South Madison Avenue. It's in Suite 101. Applicant is Justin Brown of where Malcolm, Mr. Jimenez. Good evening, Welcome. Mayor Officer uh, Williams. Um, I'm Lee Jimenez, Senior Planner with the Community Development Department in the Planning Division. PPG Architectural Coating operates a retail paint store in Suite 101 on Lot 30 of the University Park Subdivision, which is situated on the north uh, east corner of West University Drive and South Madison Drive within the GID General Industrial District. Uh, retail uses with exception to outdoor display are permitted in the GID with a use permit. The store has six employees and operates from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays and from 8 a.m. to noon on Saturdays. The paint store has operated at this site since 1993, but a, new, but a use permit was never obtained. Uh, this request is a cleanup measure to comply with code. Uh, to date, staff has not received any public input, and staff believes that this application meets, the, meets all the approval criteria for the use permit and supports this request subject to the conditions provided in the staff report. And I'll be available should you have any questions. Excellent. Uh, drove by there today. All is in order. It's well-maintained property. I don't have any concerns, um, but I will ask if there's an applicant here today, a representative, if you'd like to speak, come on up. Hello, uh, name's Justin Brown from Where Malcolm. Uh, like he said, Welcome. complaints, uh, been there since 1993, and they're just trying to get the use permit and get all up to code. Great. Do you have any questions? There are some conditions of approval. Nope. Uh, conditions of approval seem easy and we plan to follow them all. Okay. Thank you for being here today. Yep. Thank you. Any, anyone else in the audience want to speak on agenda item number 12, a use permit for PPG architectural coding? I'm not seeing anyone. Uh, this is, again, a, a use permit request with some criteria. I'm going to run through those for the record, including significant increase in vehicular pedestrian traffic, uh, this use has been in place a long time, um, 24 years as a matter of fact. Uh, this is not going to change the traffic pattern, the approval of the use permit. This is more or less a housekeeping or cleanup measure. Uh, that criteria is not a concern or is met. Nuisance from emission of odor, dust, gas, and noise. Uh, while it is a paint store and there may be some chemicals in use and fumes, there's no nuisance that we're aware of in the past or present and I find that condition or criteria to be satisfied. Contribution to the deterioration of the neighborhood or downgrading of property values. As I mentioned, I visited the property. It's a very well-maintained property. It appears to be a successful business and we are uh, very much happy to have them doing business uh, in, the, in the city. Uh, so certainly is not a deterioration and this criteria is met. Compatibility with existing surrounding structures and uses. Uh, this thing is existing. The use is this. The building's existing. The parking, no change is anticipated. So that certainly is easily met. And control of disruptive behavior inside and outside the premises. Uh, the nature of this retail use doesn't really lend itself to much ruckus or disruptive behavior. This criteria is met. Uh, there, 
Request for use permit is approved subject to the three conditions in the staff report. Thank you, Mr. Jimenez, and thank you for being here again. Okay, let's jump back to agenda item 11. Uh, this is related to a use permit. It is a request to revoke uh, an approved use permit, which would allow a retail smoke shop, a hookah lounge, uh, for New Moon Hookah Lounge, case PL170148, the, the use is located at 1835 East University Drive, suites 9 and 10, applicant is City of Tempe. Uh, we're going to have a couple members of Tempe staff talk today. And uh, we'll kick it off with Mr. Jimenez. Good evening, once again, Lee Jimenez. I'm the senior planner with the Community Development Department in the Planning Division. New Moon Hookah Lounge operated a hookah lounge in suites 9 through 10 of Hayden University Center Shopping Center, which is situated on the southeast corner of South McClintock Drive and East University Drive in the CSS com com um, Commercial Shopping and Services District. The original use permit was approved by the hearing officer on April 5th, 2011, for Tarek uh, Hookah Lounge and has since been transferred three times. The last, the last was administratively transferred to Brandon Supnanen of New Moon Hookah Lounge on May 17, 2017. The previous operator, Dream Lounge, operated the lounge in violation with the use permit, security plan, and fire code, and New Moon Hookah Lounge continued, the, uh, continued to operate the uh, lounge in the same manner. Therefore, the city is requesting a review of the approved use permit for possible revocation due to non-compliance with conditions of approval number 3, 7, 8, 10, 12, and 15. The administrative hearing took place on Monday, September 18th at the Community Development Department. City representatives from police, fire, code compliance, crime prevention, and planning attended. The operator nor the property owner attended. To date, no public input has been received by staff. And based on the information provided by Tempe Police, Tempe Fire, co-compliance, and the analysis provided in the staff report, staff recommends revocation of the approved use permit for non-compliance with conditions of approval number seven, uh, excuse me, three, seven, eight, 10, 12, and 15. And it, should you need some more uh, detail as far as what those conditions are, I'll be available to answer any questions. Thank you very much. And so uh, just to review or confirm they didn't show the owner or operator did not show for their administrative hearing and we haven't heard from them since that's correct hearing officer williams okay very good um this is uh you know use permits a substantial property right that we're talking about revoking today um so if there's additional input from other departments i'd very much like to hear that at this time sure we have um Go ahead, Tempe please Police, please Crime please Prevention, do. Tempe Fire, and Co-Compliance in, in the audience to answer any questions that you have. Um, so feel free to call upon um, whoever you like at this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, why don't we start with Fire, if that's okay. And if you guys have an order you prefer, I'm fine with that as well. Hearing Officer Williams? Yes, sir. As Code Compliance is the actual applicant for the, the case, I would have them speak first. Okay, great. Thank you. Can we do that? Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Maybe the last, the last item. Good evening. I'm Marv White, code inspector for the city of Tennessee. Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, as for the revocation of the use permit, uh, as was mentioned, uh, the conditions three, um, seven, eight, uh, ten, twelve, and fifteen. Uh, Three requires uh, a review of the use permit if there are any complaints. We did receive the complaints from the Tempe Police Department and fire. Uh, condition number seven requires a separate use permit for live entertainment, which the business was uh, conducting a DJ without the proper use permit. Uh, condition number eight requires no more than 49 persons inside of the business, which uh, they exceeded that uh, per fire. Um, also, number 10 requires a new use permit for any intensification or expansion of the use permit, uh, which they did with the uh, uh, DJ and other activities. Uh, also, uh, condition number 
12 requires uh, permits and clearances to be obtained from the audit and licensing division, which they failed to do. And also uh, condition number 15, which requires compliance with hours of operation, which they uh, failed to do. They would stay open after hours. Um, violation notices were mailed out to the uh, business owner and property owner. Um, Mr. Um, Kassam Ufe is the uh, property owner. Right. And Mr. Brandon Sukananen was the business owner. Uh, Mr. Sukananen had a previous uh, uh, court date that he appeared on on, on August 23rd, which uh, I happened to be present and he was served uh, the notice to appear for the hearing. And at that time, he advised me that he had vacated the premises, is no longer the business owner, and he turned the property over back to the uh, property owner. For Ufi. And, yes. and uh, at this time, the uh, property has been dormant, vacant, uh, no activity uh, as far as uh, we're aware of. And, um, uh, and I have not uh, had any contact from either of the parties uh, about the property at this time. Okay. Okay, and I was there today and it was vacated as well, it appeared to be. Okay, uh, thank you. Anything else? Yeah, and th this, pro this property has uh, continued to be a problem over the years. Uh, it seems like uh, every uh, business that goes in that particular uh, property uh, uh, creates a problem and we've had problems with them uh, following the conditions of approval for the use permits that are issued to them and uh, uh, it has been a continuing, mm -hmm. continuing problem. Because there's another smoke shop or a smoke shop in the same building, right, the West End. Yeah, which is owned by the property owner. And, okay. And they do have the valid use permit. Right, I kind of remember that case. Um, and that one's fairly in compliance, as you understand yes. it? Yes. Okay, so it's more related to Suite 9 and 10? Yes. Whatever happens That's there the seems problem. to have a hard time following the rules and keeping us safe. Absolutely. Okay. It, it's, it, it's been a continuous problem. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, that would be it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. your time today. You okay. Uh, go to fire department now? All right. Good evening, Hearing Officer Williams. My name is Brandon Siebert. I'm with Tempe Fire Medical Rescue Department's Community Risk Reduction Division. I'm Welcome. Fire Inspector. I drafted a letter uh, for staff outlining our concerns regarding this issue that you may have had a chance to review, but I'd like to read portions of it for the record. Please do. The Tempe Fire Medical Rescue Department seeks to express its concern regarding the continuous fire and life safety issues at Suite 9 of 1835 East University Drive which has operated as New Moon Lounge and as Dream Lounge, among other establishments. The current, or the former now, businesses have operated in near identical fashion as hookah lounges, wherein the occupants smoke flavored tobacco by means of a water pipe using charcoal as a heat source. Since at least October of 2015, the Tempe Fire Medical Rescue Department has received no less than three complaints for overcrowding at this occupancy. In addition to one 911 call for an injured person, which uh, turned out to be a, uh, a fight, a violent incident fight in which we were assisting Tempe Police Department. <clears throat> one of the aforementioned complaints was generated by a 911 call from a concerned citizen, and the other two were from officers from the Tempe Police Department who had already been called to the scene. All three complaints resulted in one fire engine staffed with four firefighters to be out of service and unavailable for emergency calls in the community while evaluating the hazardous condition. And in one instance, a fire inspector and battalion chief were dispatched for overcrowding as well. Fire inspectors from the Community Risk Reduction Division have conducted two fire and life safety inspections at this occupancy since May of 2016 as a result of overcrowding complaints. Multiple hazardous conditions were noted on both inspections, including violations involving fire extinguishers, ignition sources, 
exit signs, emergency lighting, electrical hazards, and exceeding the maximum occupant load. In one instance, the number of occupants inside the business was approximately 180 people. This occupancy is classified as a Group B or business with a maximum occupant load of 49 people. Each inspection has also resulted in fire inspectors attending multiple meetings with city staff and responsible parties from the occupancy. Several reinspections were also conducted to confirm whether or not the violations have been repaired, and at this time uh, they have not. At the forefront of these ongoing issues is what appears to be a lack of concern for the safety and well being of not only the customers and employees of the occupancy, but also the neighboring community members. What is also concerning is the fact that these problems persist even after the business has undergone changes in ownership. The amount of time and resources the Fire Medical Rescue Department has invested up to this point is fairly extensive considering the number of meetings and opportunities this business has been provided. I am prepared to provide any uh, incident reports and database records as they relate to both businesses which, is operated, which have operated at this location. We are also prepared uh, to offer any fire code interpretation, case history, and other information which may be helpful to you or any other concerned parties regarding this matter. Excellent. Uh, the information and documentation provided are very helpful, and I appreciate your organization and completeness on that. Absolutely. Uh, anything else you wanted to present? Not at this time. Okay. I may have a question for you uh, on the rebound, but. Uh, thanks again for being here. Thank you, I'm sir. Sorry that you have to take time for this, but Thank this you. is important too, I know. Okay, um, crime prevention or, or PD, whatever you like. Again, welcome. I'm glad you're here today. Good evening. My name is Lieutenant Scott Smith with the Tempe Police Department. I've been a police officer here in the city of Tempe for the last 18 years. Uh, currently, I serve as a lieutenant and uh, watch commander uh, within the field operations division of the police department. Uh, with me is uh, Detective Nate Ryberg from the Crime Prevention Unit, uh, who is in charge of our security plans for the department uh, and our representative uh, to city functions for that, for that assignment. Um, I stand here uh, today to, to provide you some um, information regarding the uh, Dream Lounge, also known as the New Moon Hookah Lounge at 1835 East University. Um, just for the record, uh, that business is in the city of Tempe, which is the county of Maricopa. Uh, additionally, uh, our sworn status, both Detective Ryberg and I, uh, are sworn state officers uh, operating as police officers in the city of Tempe, which is in the county of Maricopa, state of Arizona, and that's where judicial or statutory authority comes from. Um, for the purposes of the record, I, I would like to uh, provide some information in detail similar to the way the fire department did it. Uh, we provided a, a staff summary, um, and there's portions of that that I'd like to have in the record, and I think it will just be more efficient if we do it that way. Uh, Please proceed. Thank you. Um, since taking ownership and management of the New Moon Hookah Lounge, also known as Dream Lounge, Brandon Suknanen uh, has had repeated contacts. Uh, with the Tempe Police Department, most of, if not all, captured on body cam and available for review if needed. Um, despite having an introductory meeting with myself on March 11, 2017, and again on March 27, 2017, in which I read line by line portions of the business security plan and informed him that we wanted to partner with him to ensure he ran a safe business, Mr. Suknanen engaged in a pattern of conduct uh, which demonstrated a blatant disregard for the requirements of the security plan in indifference to the safety of the community, and though given ample warnings for violations and arrested for the same, intentionally continued to engage in activities in violation of the security plan, which posed a danger to his customers, neighboring community, fire department personnel, as well as uh, city of Tempe Police Department personnel. Um, in, in going down in a chronological order, um, on 3-11 of 17, documented under report number 17-29010, uh, there was an active shooting that occurred at 0335 hours in the parking lot between two parties. Uh, after that, I met with Mr. Suknanen. Uh, when I went to the business later that evening, he was sleeping inside the business uh, to inform him about a security plan and desire to partner with him to run a safe business. Uh, some notable quotes during that contact to him were, I asked him, so are you the full owner? And Mr. Suknanen replied, yes. Uh, I also said, when you bought the place, did you take a look at the security plan, which was already in existence? Did you know one existed? 
he replied, I didn't even know anything about that. Uh, and it's his responsibility as a business owner to abide by that uh, and be aware of that security plan. On 327-17, documented under incident number 1734921, uh, I had a meeting with Mr. Sugannon, uh, 1855 hours at his place of business. The meeting was recorded and I read every portion of the security plan while he followed along with a copy. He verbally acknowledged that he understood and, uh, and, and that he had to abide by the plan. Uh, he was also made aware that if he desired to increase the occupancy of the business or operate outside the scope of the plan, he was required to obtain an appropriate permit through the city's planning and zoning department. I also explained to him that a DJ constitutes a live music event, which is prohibited under the current security plan with that business. Uh, on 629 of 2017, documented under incident number 1796935, uh, crime prevention officer, uh, uh, Detective Megan Irwin was contacted by a concerned parent by a telephone. Um, what the parent had found was that their 16-year-old son was paid $1,200 by the owner of New Moon Hookah Lounge uh, to bring patrons into his business uh, using the juvenile's uh, Instagram social media accounts. Uh, the parent was upset that the owner was utilizing her underage son to advertise his business. Uh, the parent told our detective that she actually reached out to the owner and told him not to have any further contact with her son. The parent informed uh, us uh, that in one of the social media posts by the juvenile, there was a flyer that indicated um, that patrons can pay $5 extra if they do not have an ID uh, to get into the business, which is a clear violation. I believe that flyer was printed and forwarded as a part of the report and maybe a part of the attachments uh, for this, this case. Um, that, that flyer was emailed to us, uh, and we retained a copy of that on July 14th of 2017, so it was some time after the initial report to us. Uh, on June 30th, 2017, approximately 0229 hours, um, there was a physical altercation that occurred past business hours, um, or, or past their operating hours. Um, this fight occurred in the roadway. An investigation revealed that two patrons of the business uh, were involved in this fight. After that, a security plan check was conducted at the business. Approximately 15 people could be seen in the parking lot as officers approached the business. A person was directing them to go inside the business, saying something to the effect of, quote, cops are coming. As officers approached, at which time the business closed its doors, an odor of marijuana could be observed outside the business along with cigar rolling papers and a wrapper and several spiritus liquor containers on the ground. The customers at the location primarily appeared to be teenagers. Contact was made at the business uh, after 0300 hours and the occupants began to leave. A rough count was conducted and it was estimated the business had contained approximately 130 persons inside. There was one individual collecting money outside the front door who was wearing a School of Rock security shirt. That is a different business than the one we were at and against a security plan. <clears throat> the individual was identified. Uh, he advised that he was charging $10 a head and that IDs were being checked and the average age was between 18 and 24 years old. Uh, the owner of the business, Brandon Sukkonen, uh, was contacted and he exited the business. Um, he, he stated to our officer that he believed there is a security plan in place for the establishment, but is not aware of it or where the pertinent paperwork would be. And this was after my meeting with him. It was noted that there was a live DJ at the location and Brandon advised that he does not have a special permit and was not aware he needed one. Brandon was informed that he would be contacted for follow-up pertaining to those violations. Later that same day, Detective Ryberg met with Mr. Sukunanen and uh, arrested him and issued him a citation in lieu of detention, citing him for being open past operating hours, having a live DJ without a permit, exceeding the maximum occupancy, no copy of the security plan on premises. He was also provided another courtesy copy of his signed security plan, so he would have a copy at the business and was advised he needed to have it um, uh, to have any employees read it also. Each violation was reviewed with Mr. Sukunanen and he was shown where it was located in the security plan. On 7-3 of 17, documented under incident report number 1777730, at approximately 036, uh, 306 hours, Brandon Signano was contacted by Tempe Police Patrol Officer Tattenhorst, reference to security check at the New Moon Hookah Lounge, located at 1835 East University Drive. During the contact, Brandon appeared to be in violation of his security plan for business by operating after business hours. Observations inside were approximately 10 individuals who were seated on couches around table where hookah pipes were being consumed. Brandon stated that he was not open for business and not in violation of his security plan because these individuals had come to the business prior to closing and they were consuming the product they had purchased prior to closing. Our officer explained to Brandon that his business must be closed, meaning patrons had to leave his business at closing hours, and it did not mean that they could remain after hours 
uh, after even after they uh, after because they had purchased the hookah prior to closing. The owner, Brandon, stated he understood. Officer Tattenhorst uh, further observed that Brandon did not have an employed security personnel working at the time of contact, as required by the security plan. Brandon was wearing a black T-shirt and white writing, displaying security across his back, and he informed the officer that he was operating as security. Brandon informed the officer that he was operating as an owner-manager at the time of the contact, and Officer Tattenhorst advised Brandon, per the security plan, he was unable to perform managerial duties and security duties simultaneously. Again, the owner, Brandon, stated he understood. Brandon was given a warning for the infractions. No citations were issued in this incident. Shortly thereafter, uh, on, on July 5th, uh, a few days later, document under 17-78702, at approximately 2.10 hours, Brandon Sakuna was arrested by Officer Tattenhorst and cited in lieu of detention at the place of business for one count of city code violation, security plan violation, operating past business hours. When contacted by Officer Tattenhorst on this evening, Sakuna stated his business was closed and therefore he was not in violation of the security plan. Officer Tattenhorst told Brandon that he observed the subject seated inside his business and responded that by stating it was a business meeting that he was hosting and that he was not operating as a business at the time. Officer Tattenhorst asked Brandon how the individuals inside were associated with his business if it was a business meeting. Brandon then changed his story and stated that it was a private party that he was hosting for personal friends. I told, or Officer uh, Tattenhorst told Brandon that he was still operating as a business if he had security staff stationed at the door and had customers arriving after hours consuming the products he sells at the business. Brandon continued to engage in gamesmanship and stated he did not believe he was in violation of the plan because he was hosting a private party in which people had to be on the guest list in order to enter the business, and if they were not on the list, they would be turned away at the door by security. Officer Tanhorst then asked Brandon to see the guest list, at which point Brandon stated something to the effect of touche and began laughing. While walking through the parking lot, officers observed multi, uh, multiple empty bottles of liquor and made contact with underage juvenile out past curfew hours. Officer Tattenhorst showed Brandon that his and his security plan addressed both these issues and further stated to him that both he and his security staff needed to become more familiar with the security plan. It should be noted that the operating hours of Brandon's security plan for New Moon Hookah Lounge are as follows, Friday to Saturday from 2 p.m. to 2 a.m., Sunday through Thursday from 2 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, a week or two after that, on 723-17, documented under 17-85943, uh, at approximately 0403 hours, Brandon Sukhnano was arrested for Tempe City Code Violation 2670 and International Fire Code Violation 1425 for overcrowding after he was observed operating again after business hours. New Moon Hookah Lounge located uh, at, the, at the address was in violation of multiple aspects of a security plan and safety regulations. In this instance, Brandon was booked and held at the Tempe City Jail located at 120 uh, East 5th Street. Officers observed approximately 20 people gathered near the entrance of the business. No one was seen wearing an employee uniform or garment to include any marked security personnel. The parking lot was filled with litter and empty bottles of alcohol. While approaching the business, multiple subjects were yelling at the patrons standing in front of the business to get inside. Officers watched as approximately 20 patrons walked into the business, and as the last one entered, the front door was shut and locked behind them. From outside of the business, officers could hear the patrons inside the business repeating and chanting uh, some profane language directed at the police. As contact was made with Brandon, he immediately became apologetic and stated, I was literally about to close, like right now, without even being notified why he was being contacted by law enforcement. Brandon appeared already aware that he was operating a full hour and a half past operating business hours after he explained he was in the process of sending people home when he was, con when he was contacted. Officers asked Brandon how many people were inside, and he said there was absolutely not more than about 43. It should be noted that Officer Tattenhorst stood at the front door and counted each individual who exited and was able to determine approximately 90 to 100 individuals in the interior of the business. The maximum occupancy of the establishment is 49 persons. After requesting all patrons to leave, Officer Tattenhorst asked Brandon to provide him with a security plan. It took approximately five minutes for Brandon to locate the security plan, but he was, un ultimately, unable, er, but he was ultimately able to do so. Brandon was arrested for the following charges this evening. Three counts of Tempe City Code 2670 security plan violation for not having security in uniforms, uh, for operating past hours, and for uh, maximum occupancy. He was also charged with one count at Tempe City Code 1425, which is, uh, sim or which is um, considered uh, a part of International Fire Code 107.5 for overcrowding. Uh, that, that morning I attended uh, Mr. Sutnanen's initial appearance at the Tempe City Court and learned the following. Mr. Sukhanan had actually failed to appear on his two prior cases, and active warrants for his arrest were in process. Those were for when he was cited in lieu of detention and wasn't taken into custody, but he failed to appear in court and deal with that. 
Based on the totality of the circumstances, the dangers posed to the community by Sugnanan's actions, his inability to show up for court, and the repetitive nature of his behavior, the judge uh, that morning imposed a $5,000 cash-only bond for the morning's offenses and required that before he be allowed to open his business again, he needs authorization and proof from the Tempe Fire Marshal that the location is safe. Additionally, he imposed a, an additional $1,000 cash-only bond for his prior offense and another $500 cash-only bond for the other prior offense. Police reports related to the above listed incidents are available upon request based on Sukhnanan's pattern of conduct, past history predating Sukhnanan's ownership involving crimes of violence at the location, and the manner in which the business is operated. It is the request of the Tempe Police Department that the use permit for the business be revoked. It is believed that a failure to do so places the safety of the community as well as police and fire, fire personnel at great risk for, pers or for potential injury and or death. Uh, Your Honor, uh, having been dealing with this issue for, for quite some time, uh, and as an 18-year police officer, um, my fear is that if this is allowed to continue or this use permit is allowed to transfer for a similar business, um, that we will be headline news for a major significant incident where there's loss of life. Um, I do believe that this business is a danger to the community, especially the community outside. Um, and, uh, you know, a full revocation is what's being requested to protect the, the, the safety and security of, of not only our city, uh, the community, but the personnel sworn to protect it. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, before I give a podium, Detective Robert. Is it you repeating anymore? <laughs> I don't. Do you want to answer any questions or clarify anything? Okay. Uh, but you are certainly most welcome to make any statements you like on the record. I appreciate your spending the time here this evening. So you're most welcome to, if you like, uh, won't bother me one bit. So, um, but I am just, uh, I've been doing this for quite a while. I've never seen a case of this egregious. I have a few other comments to make when we get there, but you're certainly welcome to speak, officer, if you like. Okay. Um, anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on agenda item number 11? Anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak on agenda item 12? Uh, Certainly an extremely bad actor, uh, a criminal, a uh, fugitive, I think if that's the right term now. Um, I'm amazed and appalled and a few other words. Um, this is a hearing to talk about a revoking their, their right to have a use permit or have this use permit for a smoke shop. Uh, what I've heard today and seen in the documentation provided um, is that we've got a use that is conducted in an unsafe manner. Uh, we've got a use that has had at least 180 people in it at one time with an occupancy of 49, an extremely dangerous condition. We have added activities to the use permit that have never been approved or permitted. We have unsafe building conditions. Uh, we have a non-compliance with the use permit conditions, just blatant non-compliance as listed um, as listed by uh, um, Marvin when he was up here earlier. Uh, in my opinion, we have a willful, well not my opinion, the record shows a willful disregard of security plan that's required. Uh, we have a business, an owner, and a use that's tying up city resources that could be doing something else, maybe saving somebody. These are first responders. Um, and we have a threat to the use of our community. Uh, this is terrible, and I'm glad to have this case before me today to um, happily uh, revoke this use permit. Uh, we talked about criteria for use permit in a couple other cases tonight. And they include things like um, adequate control of disruptive behavior inside and outside premises and to create a nuisance. Uh, clearly, this does not meet that criteria and is, is quite the opposite where we have criminal activity repeatedly. Um, contribution to deterioration of the neighborhood and downgrading of property values. It's exactly what's going on here. And the biggest thing maybe is the threat to the youth of the community. So this use permit is, re is revoked for this, the reasons I've just reviewed. And I want to thank city staff again for your time. This is an important case, an important matter. 
and I appreciate your time and effort on this. Okay. Uh, Mr. Excuse me. Um, Mr. Abrahamson, any additional documentation you would like or any entrance to the record for this case? No, Hearing Officer Williams, I believe it's been adequately covered. Okay. Yeah, thorough job. Great. Thank you very much. And I know parents in our community thank you as well. Okay. Um, I got a, let me see, a next hearing officer meeting will be Tuesday, December 5th, 2017, before we break up this party tonight. Uh, Mr. Abrahamson, anything additional you would like to put on the record or any announcements? Thank you, hearing officer Williams, no. Very good. Okay. Uh, the November 7th, 2017 meeting of the hearing officer is hereby adjourned.